And it's Cigar Saturday here on bourbonblog.com live. And thanks everyone for joining us. Mario A. Pena, artist and entrepreneur, joined us uh, right here with Maddie Roth. They're in the same place tonight. It's it's nice to actually oh. have, Rather than to see uh, three screens, we're actually seeing two screens joining us live from Saja's. How's everybody doing? Good, good, good. And yourself? I'm doing, I'm doing good. I'm usually outside smoking a cigar as well, but for now, uh, it's a little chilly out. I'm just having a cocktail inside, and I'll join everyone outside uh, here in a little while, maybe when it's a little warmer uh, tonight. Yeah, we, don't, we don't want you to look like Jack Nicholson at the end of The Shining, man. So. <laughs> right, that's right. That's, <laughs> but uh, as, as everyone begins to join us here, I see more and more joining us. Make sure you like this, tweet this, share this video, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, with uh, Mario and uh, and Maddie, and um, you're you, you're based not too far away, Mario. Is that right, for Maddie? Yes, correct. We're about what uh, 20, 20 minutes away from yeah, you? yeah, 20? yeah, at most. Yeah. De depending on on which one of us is driving, like the bigger asshole, it's not that far. <laughs> not not too far. Uh, I've really been enjoying uh, checking out your art online. Uh, yeah, some 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 really great. I was I was. Uh, Tweeting and, and sharing those uh, with Lucille Ball from Lucille Ball to Madonna, all kinds of uh, cool cool pieces you've put together. Uh, tell us about tell us about your art. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop up your uh, your website as you do that. Sure. So um, my work it, it, it's a it's it's a spectrum of just like explosions of color. Uh, my work deals with uh, you know history, uh, identity, race, um, social commentary. I try to incorporate. Um, you know, try to stay current with the uh, stuff that's going on, you know, on a global level, not just here in the States. Um, you know, uh, childhood experiences, uh, current experiences, and, um, you know, hip hop culture, music, uh, all genres plays a big role in uh, my work. And, um, you know, also being a big fan of photography, I incorporate a lot of mixed media collage. And a lot of people, you know, every time people look at my work, like my people say your work speaks Miami. 305 all the time, you know? It's because of the tropical colors that I use. Now, could I say that my early work uh, dealt with the uh, color palette that I'm dealing with now? No, obviously, you know, you evolve. Um, you know, being a freshman in art school, you know, you're, you're trying to find yourself, Tom. And, you know, I was just this 18 year old kid trying to find myself, trying to find my identity, you know, you know, being a little rebellious at, at, at times and whatnot. And, uh, you know, just, trying to find a, a signature, a language, and an identity for myself, not only as an individual, but also as an artist. And, you know, as time passes, you know, 20 years later, I myself look at my work and I'm like, wow, like I, the evolution is 360, you know? Um, and the fact that, you know, when I travel, when I went to Cuba in 2019, and just to see the architecture, the vibrant uh, colors, just the, it, it's like, a tropical paradise, obviously, but just to be inspired by the people, the colors, the um, culture, and just picking up all these things, absorbing them mentally and saying, hey, you know what? Let me make a mental note of this because I just got an idea for a new series of works, you know, going to Miami on a yearly basis um, for the past five years, going to Art Basel um, and just picking up a little bit of everything that I can and then saying to myself, how can I take what I just absorbed mentally and visually and now create my own thing in the laboratory. And, you know, I try to make it fun. Um, the older I get and the uh, more and more I get into depth with my work, I'm saying to myself, how can I take this tool, which is a tool to not only um, be creative, but how can I use it to also heal? Because it's a healing tool, you know? It's a therapeutic tool, not only just for me, but how can I take a little bit of my talent, my creativity and blessing and, you know, share it with others? You know, because we're, we're living in times right now. And Maddie will agree that and you'll agree that we need it. You know, yeah. we, we got to spread love. We, we need that healing. We need that therapy, which any, you know, whichever way possible. So I'm just constantly exploring in the laboratory. And I tell Maddie all the time, I'm a scientist. The older I get, it's like I, I, I envision myself with the uh, science lab uh, coat on. And I'm just experimenting with all types of stuff that, you know, I, I absorb, I read, I see. 
I'm going to actually just uh, stick one of your pieces up here. Look at this. I want sure. to be really cool. Um, just so people can see. And again, the website to go to is uh, Mario A. Pena. And we're glad to have him joining us uh, live there with Matty Rock on Cigar Saturday. Uh, tell us about this. I just, I, I'm pulling some kind of uh, from your website. So that piece right there, um, that piece was done for Sanj. Uh, Sanj when Sanj was uh, renovating and uh, updating the uh, cigar lounge, we had spoke and uh, he says, hey, you know, I plan on renovating the uh, uh, smokers lounge, the members lounge. And I kind of sort of, you know, he says, I want to go with a gray palette uh, for the walls and the interior. But he says, I need something that it's going to bounce off the walls. And he goes, I've been looking at your work. And he goes, I think that, they, that you know, with the, uh, the, charcoal gray, the charcoal gray background that I'm going to use for the uh, color of the walls and your work, he says, it's, it's a marriage. He says, it goes hand in hand. He goes, because I can see it in my mind. And Science himself is very creative and he's a visionary. He says, I need your work up on my wall. So I said, what do you want? He goes, I love those Afrocentric faces that you do. Um, he goes, I love them. He goes, so if you can make me a series of three pieces commissioned. He goes, I would love and I would feel honored to have your work hanging in my lounge. So I said, all right, let's get to work. So the character you see in the middle, uh, Tom, I've always been infatuated with character faces as a kid growing up. I was always drawing faces, looking at other graffiti artists, looking at other artists, studying the great masters from the Renaissance to the Pablo Picassos to the Francis right. and, you know, um, just going through that and just saying to myself, okay, take a little bit of this, take a little bit of that. I, now I have everything in the pot. Now I got to cook up my, my my dish. And I've always been a big fan of Afrocentric culture, African culture, and just studying, you know, the African art, you know, where they used uh, a lot of geometric sculptural um, references. Pablo Picasso is one of my favorite artists of all time. Nice. He was a big uh, advocate for African art and African culture. And, you know, and I just little by little, and it's taken me years to develop this type of style. But um, I feel that every time I go at it and as years go by, I get more and more profound. And I'm like, you know what? I see it. I'm building a signature for myself, you know? And, and, and um, it's been asked in the past, you know, people will ask me, uh, that piece or those pieces, those faces that you do, is there a little bit of you in there? And I said, absolutely. So it's almost like a semi self portrait of me. So there's some, some of me in there. That's cool. I really, and that piece is actually up at uh, where yes. these guys are. Yes, that's a, that's a part of his permanent collection. Wow. Okay. What I didn't even know that. I just I picked that one. So what a nice that and a couple other pieces. Are the other pieces up here too, or is that just one of them? That's uh... um, um, there might be another one there too, but probably you know since it was a commission just for him. I like it. I like it. I was going to pull <laughs> another one up here uh, as, as as I was looking at. Um, some uh, some really great ones, some really interesting ones today. Um, just some very interesting uh, pieces of work. Let me see here. Did I? Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get Lu the, the Lucille Ball one up. I loved this one. I, sh I shared that one online too. I thought that was really cool. Um, tell me about this. So Lucille Ball, I did that piece in 2017. Um, I was on my way to having my first show at uh, Spectrum Miami, which is one of the uh, big art art fairs in uh, Art Basel. And I said, you know what? I got to do everything Miami themed. Like I did all tropical colors. I had my framer frame all my artwork in white because I said, I'm going to Miami. I'm going to a hot spot. So right away, Lucille Ball came to mind. When you think of Miami, you think about Cuba. When you think about Cuba and, and Lucy, you think about Ricky Ricardo. And that's why yeah. when, you, uh, when you zoom in on Lucy's face, I made it seem like she has Ricky tatted over her eyebrow with a teardrop. <laughs> so I kind of sort of gave her a, uh, you know, urban type of feel and like, look, I got my man's uh, name tatted on my eyebrow. So, <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> that's where it came to play. And if you see, uh, you know, vaguely in the back uh, behind her head, you'll see the word, it starts to call out Miami and then it fades away. I see it. Yeah. I like that. That's, it's so cool. There's, there's so much that can be told through, uh, these types of pieces, so many stories within that. Um, wow. And so you know, so you usually get to uh, Miami several times a year to, to be a part of the scene there? Yeah, I go to Miami every single year, man. I, uh, d you know, due to COVID, obviously this year we couldn't go, so. Right. All right, you're going to, Sanj is going to continue the art show for you. So hold on, so Sanj is showing this, some of the stuff that Mario. Oh, very, there it is. This is strictly for me. Hello, Tom. How hey, Sanj, good to see you. 
Likewise, this is strictly for me. One off. I and love one it. More, you hold on to this, Mario. This is this is called puro because it's all due to uh, uh, has to do with cigars. Yeah, cigars. So that's puro. So and this is Maduro. That's the Maduro. Oh, I love it. That's cool. And the fact that it's covering my face makes it even better. Better. <laughs> and, and then this is the skateboard that Mario did for me. It's called Section Eight. That's our famous cigar we make. It's called Section Eight. Oh wow! So, so that's the skateboard. This is all on our back walls in our back lounge. Beautiful. Thank you for for showing that the Maduro, the the and the Puro and the uh, Section Eight. That's that's really cool. Very cool. So you got to see hands on uh, the actual work hanging in the back. There it is. <laughs> Our beautiful model. Yes. That's right. <laughs> he is kind of sexy, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but this is carrying the, the the art. That's right. It it, it always always helps. Uh, and again, if you have any questions for uh, uh, Mario, there definitely ask them down below. And thanks. I see a lot of people liking and sharing this video already and i think someone already asked i am um I hopefully we'll be back outside next week but for now i'm inside doing a, a cocktail and uh gentlemen what you, you're you're smoking something in honor of art it looks like there so we had to do it today so we're all knocking our uniformity so we've had on one or two times before the the art series by drew estate that came out as part of the uh 20 year anniversary and that is the cuba artes and uh, like I said, Tom, we've smoked them before. Mario, you smoked them. Um, very nice, light infusion, rich, creamy. And like I said, if you've seen the bands and you know the story behind it, it came with special water towers that were done by artists directly out of Brooklyn. Yes. Um, so this being the art day, we wanted to bring a little bit of the uh, little bit of the extra art into it as well. So to make the whole evening about art. Um, you're going to have to be doing the, the talking fancy drinks this evening. I, because I've been eating like a sow of good old pole in spring today. So <laughs> quite, quite uninteresting. So you're going to have to do the. Uh, I have, I have yeah. a little Seagram's ginger ale and I have a little. All Seagram's right. Seltzer. So you're, 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 you're going to be pulling the weight on this one of what you're drinking and, and what's going on back there tonight, Tom. Well, thank you. Beverages. I like how there's a smoking art tonight. We, we try to always drink a little art and, and smoke some art and. And for those of you that usually only join us on Saturday nights, you don't always see this this backdrop. I use this backdrop the rest of the week, but this is a little bit of our uh, collection here at uh, Bourbon Blog headquarters. I'm having a, a revolver cocktail made with some wonderful coffee, uh, songbird from uh, Bloomington, Indiana, Cardinal Spirits, and some uh, lovely rye whiskey in here as well. And uh, I got some other things on the table here I may actually uh, grab and sip on, or maybe I'll just uh, reach behind me and, you know, I can actually see, on, and I, yeah, I may, I may turn all the way around and grab something. It's very possible. But tell us down below what you are uh, sipping on, smoking on, and um, this, you know, this year I think for uh, well, you know, the artists that I know, whether they're performing artists, visual artists, um, you know, for for many reasons, uh, in, including the pandemic, has presented um, both challenges and hopefully, uh, in some cases, inspiration. I mean. Uh, I guess a tough question to even ask, how to even ask it into a question, what do you see uh, 2020 as a stamp in the art world being and how will it how will it carry on? I mean, what's it been for you and what do you see it for the art world? So 2020, obviously, it has been very challenging for everybody, but, um, you know, 2020 was uh, a test of life for everyone. But I think that, uh, you know, the fact that we lost a lot of people uh, due to uh, COVID and uh, underlying health conditions, that's, uh, you know, that's something that you, you know, you, you don't wish on nobody and you just right. don't wish it happens. But I also took it as a blessing because it made me uh, put the brakes on my life and uh, reflect and take a few steps back and actually slow down and ask myself, okay, so we're all going through this. You're going through a pandemic. You know, you're, 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 you're so restricted to the things that you can do. So what do you do? You know what? The first thing that clicked in my head, Tom, was go back to the lab. Now, we always complain that we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time in the day. We got too many responsibilities, too many distractions, 
So I said to myself, what's the excuse now? <laughs> no excuse. So I went back in the lab. I put all my ducks in a row. I ordered all the materials I needed to order. And I said, you know what? Now I'm going to start experimenting. Did I come up with a painting or a series right away? No. I started experimenting with different mediums, different surfaces, different color swatches, um, looking for uh, inspiration, looking at documentaries that I didn't even think I would look at. And even documentaries that weren't even art related. I'm watching old movies that I, that I watched 25, 30 years ago, bringing them back into the, a circle just to get the, the, the uh, creative uh, juices flowing. And I say, you know what, now is the time. And again, from a span of last year to this year, my work has evolved again. And it's due to, to me, I look at it as a blessing because again, I was given time that I was always journeying for and complaining about like, hey, I don't have enough time, you know. And again, Mario, there's no excuses now. Let's right. do this, right? Now I can take my time. So I start something today and I put it away for two weeks. I'm not stressing about it because I say, look, we're going to be in this for the long haul. But for not just for me, but for a lot of artists worldwide, it's been a blessing to a lot of our, us, uh, uh, us artists. Now, just like anything else, whether it's politics, whether it's recession, whether it's economics, everything that happens on a daily basis, some way, somehow affects the art world and affects the artist. You know, the fact that they weren't able to hold Art Basel this year, that was a big loss for the, that was a big hit for the art world, especially, you know, the city of Miami. It's a global thing. Artists from all around the world get together for one week in Miami every single year. Those artists who were looking forward to presenting their work for the first time with the major gallery representing them, or for the first, you know, artists for the first time are looking to uh, exhibit their work in these large fairs, finally, after so many years, hey, finally, I got in. They weren't able to do it. So I look at it this way, Tom. I'm a firm believer of that old quote and that slogan. A setback is only an opportunity for a comeback. Right. You know, I got blessed uh, right before COVID hit. Um, I was picked up by a gallery, the Rexer Gallery, who um, took me in, gave me the opportunity. They liked my work. Um, I did a group show for the opening and they gave me my own solo show coming up this August 2021. So, again, with this pandemic and all this stuff going on, I said, you know what? I'm going to go hard now. I'm going to go the hardest I've ever gone because now I have the ample time. And I got a solo show. This is my first solo show, Tom, in years. And for a gallery who just opened to give me an opportunity like that, that speaks volumes, man. You know? And I'm looking forward to it. I talk to Maddie about it all the time. I mean, a solo show is a big thing. And I, I keep thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute. I got the gallery to myself in August for my work, a solo show. I was like, that's huge. So I said, now there's no excuses. I raised my standards to myself as an artist. And there's no looking back. You got you to take the good with the bad, right? You, tr you try to take the uh, as much positive as you can out of the negative. And again, you're still restricted, but you can't let the pandemic put you down. You just got to keep going with it. Keep adversity, going with yeah. it. Adversity. Adversity, adversity inspires but, invention in a case like this, right? But so. it's been a blessing, man. It's been a blessing, Tom. And, you know, I mean, I'm a firm believer that the art world, we're going to get back up to this. And, and a lot of the artists that I follow, a lot of the artists that I respect on a global level, they are coming hard because they've been in the lab and hidden for months, almost a year. And I know that what they're coming out with, Tom, it's going to be straight fire. Right. See, these guys grew and created. I binge watched Voltron. So I feel, I feel <laughs> I'm not really sure how I feel about that. You know? So they've, uh, they've created masterpieces. Uh, they've gone to the well and I watched Voltron, so I might have, might have to reflect on how I spent my time. But but there's always tomorrow. There's there's more binge watching you can do or art you can create, Maddie. It's uh, there's more out there now. Now this the show the the solo show. This was this past August or upcoming August? No, it's coming August 2020. Coming. Okay, that's what I thought you meant. I want to make sure. So uh, that will be up on your uh, website then. Yes. Um, yep. And again, and that, my, that, my website's getting redesigned as well, so. When people go back onto my website, it's going to look different too. So I'm wrapping that up as well. Just got off the phone with my web developer actually last night. We had a meeting in Zoom. So that's coming up. So a lot of new, fresh things are coming. A lot of great little projects, you know, that I talked to Maddie Rock. Even Signs knows about my little projects that I'm working on. I got some goodies coming, you know, but this time around, I want to take my time because to me, not just me, but they're going to be, they're going to mean a lot, you know, and I'm doing it with love, doing it with a lot of passion and stuff like that. So I got some goodies coming, man. 
It's right. going to be fun, Tom. And you remember what we talked about um, with both Jesse and uh, and Chris work. So we wanted to develop that show. It was going to it was going to be probably the end of last year. Now it's looking like God knows when this year. But right. we put out all those limited edition uh, long boards where you can commission the artist of your choice. Uh, and we're going to have a show here at Sanjas. Um, so you've oh, seen, nice. So you've seen what the back looks like. So we kind of want to do our little gala for that. So it'll be all all you know. Six to seven artists only total. We run in a limited uh, edition, and it'll be an art show with here. And obviously, with Sanjo, over here, anytime you do something here, it'll it'll turn itself into a charity event too. So, hopefully, all the restrictions and nonsense uh, related to COVID after they get lifted, we, we hope to see you here for that. I see. oh, very nice. What are we? That's uh... this is number one of one hundred, and I own it. Very nice. Number one of 100. This is going to someone very special soon. Very nice. I like it. And the, and again, that is uh, uh, that is the rest of them or others are available on the website or they are? Um... So that was a limited run that I did. Limited uh, run, okay. Um, I did 100, I, I did 100 uh, limited edition. All the stuff that I've been dropping lately uh, for the last few months has been limited edition stuff. Um, you know, just to keep it, not, it's not about hype or nothing. It's just keeping my stuff limited. You know, I think it holds more value than having 100,000 products produced. And, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm just on a different uh, level of thinking and right. um, exclusivity and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I'm just rolling with that. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm planning everything. You know, proper planning prevents poor performance, as they say. So I'm just being very strategic, not only from a creative level, but also, uh, uh, a marketing uh, aspect. How do I market myself? What crowd or what audience am I trying to cater to? Am I trying to cater to all audiences, right? Which that's what I want to do. I, I'm not only just trying to cater uh, to uh, just audiences. I'm trying to educate people as well through my art as well. You know, I think art is a powerful uh, tool for educating. So, I mean, why not spread the knowledge, man? Spread the knowledge and love. Yeah. You know? um, I have a little... Uh, just to not to, not to throw you off, but this Please, right here, this right here, will be going to Mr. Tom Fisher. <laughs> oh well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. I yes, means a lot. So, yeah. Thank you. And I think the fun part of this, and we we talk about it in other shows. Um, we talked about it uh, even on one of the other podcasts on the uh, on the Lounge Experience and how cigars and art and all this they all you know they all play together. Now you even look at all the old Cuban escort that uh, that Mario was talking about, and all the passion and everything from from cigars gets right into the artwork yep. as well too. I mean, if you've ever looked at a box, you know Mario had spoken about it before in Sanchez. Look at you know what's the box saying to you? Look at some of the artwork on there, and a lot of people it's easy to forget right about what goes into that too. It's there's a large marketing and uh, and art sector behind the stick itself, right? So you could have a, a great stick. And uh, like over the years, some of the boxes that these created, some of the stuff that uh, that Opus has done, those those humidors that Sanjana you know, had showed before, you look at the artwork and, and you get the vibe with it. And that's what makes it such a cool thing. You actually get to marry some of these things together. I mean, we had Jesse Flores on the show from Subculture. Yes. So, you know, imagine 20 years of art very specifically for the cigar, the cigar culture and the cigar world. And I keep seeing that expanding and expanding. So the influence of art, even within, you know, the cigar industry has been nothing short of, uh, of incredible. And, you know, Mario's already been commissioned for not just here by Saj, but other people for cigar inspired art. And like I said, you have Jesse with, uh, with victims who victims 1972 makes, you know, that's his livelihood. That's how much there's become a demand for this. And, uh, in our current culture, and I love it. I love how it's all married together. And it's an important way that art evolves, right? Every every couple of generations, art evolves in different ways, how it gets to the public, how people see it. I mean, in the 70s and 80s, you know, graffiti art, you know, you were scoundrel. It's terrible. I don't want to see this. And now it's some of the most sought after art that you can come across. When you're looking at Dondi pieces and, and Ramel Z and, and all these other guys, you could go to a Christie's auction and they're getting, you know, what a Picasso would go for. So it shows you how that influence went into the art world. And, and what wasn't important a couple of years back, and 
look look what it's doing now. So I mean, I love it. I love the expressionism of it. I mean, it's great. I'm good. Thank you, son. Absolutely. And, and again, if anyone who has questions, uh, ask away. It's uh, Mario Pena and Maddie Rock here. A lot of great people that always join us every week here. And uh, definitely take this time to like this video. Share this video on Twitter, on YouTube, or on Facebook. And as always, uh, we'll pick somebody out towards the end of the show for that uh, winning bag of coffee from Janice Coffee Roasters, Bourbon Barrel Aged. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick another piece of art here uh, to um, to uh, let's see here. Uh, any, any on the website you want me to you want to pick out, uh, Mario? Any uh, any favorite ones that uh, are running? I, I got the, uh, I got uh, Frida Kahlo on there. Yes, actually, I was just looking at that one. I was thinking that might be a fun one to uh, uh, to talk about. Um, one moment, I'll pop that up here and. Um, there it is. Wow. All right. So, Frida, tell, tell us about uh, this. It's a fa famous Mexican painter, right? Yeah. So, Frida, I mean, what, we, we, we can say so much about Frida Kahlo. I mean, yeah. a revolutionary way ahead of her time, especially as a, as a uh, female artist, you know, in a, in a, in a male dominated field, you can say, especially, you know, growing up in her times. Uh, with great uh, muralists. You had Orozco, you had uh, Diego Rivera, who was her husband. Um, but she said, look, man, I'm a painter, and I'm going to prove to you that this is just not a male-dominated uh, industry or field, whichever way you want to call it. And I respected Frida because Frida was Frida. She expressed herself. There was no bashfulness. She was blunt not only as an individual and not only as the way she carried herself, but in her artwork. And the majority of her uh, work was self-portraits. But you can feel the pain, you can feel the passion, and you can feel the love. Um, everything that she expressed through a canvas, it was like you can actually put yourself for a moment in her life and say, wow, like I can feel that pain. I can feel that joy. And just the way that, you know, she was a feminist. There's no doubt about it. She was a feminist, believed, for, you know, in the things that she believed, believed for women's rights. And you're talking about in that time, you're talking about 60s, 70s, 50s, right? Even right. the 40s, obviously, as an adolescent. Um, and just the way she carried herself, um, I had a lot of respect for her, Tom. So I always wanted to do a piece on Frida. And I know that Frida's loved by so many people. You know, and I think more women than men because of the way, you know, the uh, way she fought for women's rights. And as a woman artist who was, you know, at that time, as we know, for those who know art history, um, they were really respected. Women were more looked at, a, you know, oh, yeah, being painted nude on a canvas, you know, or being photographed in a nude. But to hear of female painters like Frida Kahlo, no, people weren't really like respecting that, you know. So I always wanted to do a piece on Frida. Um, I did, I made sure that I did my research on her. So I said, okay, this is a special piece, not only to me, you know, but I know it's gonna be a special piece to a large audience. So I have to make, I have to do this right. And I said, okay, how can I give, how can I create this Frida piece and give it the Mario Pena style, you know, like bring her into the current, the present. So the first thing I thought about, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a Gangsta Frida, man. I got some tattoos on her neck, you know? I put some uh, tattooing around the eye, as you can see, just to yeah. give it almost like bringing in that African culture, just mixing intermingling cultures, right? The little graffiti, the grunge. But I think what did it for me, and, you know, being intricate and going in with small color pencils and actually adding in the makeup, the eyeshadow, but to me... What did it for me was like, when I drew that tattoo on her neck, I said, this is it, man. This is gonna make such a powerful impact right here because people are looking at Frida, they're used to looking at her, oh, Frida with the unibrow. I said, you know what? I'm gonna add more than just a unibrow. I'm gonna bring a current, like a Kat Von D, Frida Kahlo into the present, right? I like it. A little bit of the old with a little bit of the new and just infuse it and then incorporate graffiti, the drips, abstract, different textures and layers. And I did a series of those, man. I did about, I'm gonna say, I did like a series of five 
of Frida's. Sold them, sold most of them. This one that we're looking at now is sold to to a, a, a collector that has collected a lot of my work. The person who actually owns this piece owns 12 of my original paintings. So that's a, she's a big time collector. Amazing. And uh, again, that's uh, that's really incredible. Uh, where can I mean, I know you were mentioning corsages, uh, other places, people, if they're not in private collections, can uh, see your art. Any uh, any places? Uh, Casa de Maddie. <laughs> Casa de Maddie, Maddie Rock has. More yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, the list of collectors is growing. Um, also, there's a. Uh, works available right now at the Rexer Gallery. That's the gallery who's uh, uh, representing my work. It's R-E-X-E-R, -E -E Rexer. Um, you can find them on Instagram, Rexer Gallery. They're uh, based out of Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, so you can have, uh, you, you'll see my work on there. You know, you just click on the artist link. Some of my works are up there. And also, if uh, anyone's interested in purchasing the work, you know, you can contact the gallery and uh, get it through there. Or my online store. Like I said, my whole website's being revamped. You know, the whole the whole new year, new me, I've been working on my website for quite some time now, Tom. And it's not I'm not revamping the site because it's a new year. I just want to lay things out the right way. So I've been taking my time and planning everything out. Not only, you know, as a creative, but at the end of the day, I got to market myself. And, you know, strategic marketing strategies can be very tricky. You know, there's so many options, you know. So I'm taking my time with that. You know, taking uh, professional advice and then... Also listening to myself, what is it that you want, Mario? What impact do you want people to have when they look at your work? What is it that you're trying to say? What message are you trying to convey to a 10-year-old or an 80-year-old? You know, so all that stuff comes into play, even with a design of a website, you know, user-friendly, uh, very welcoming, you know, heartfelt. So it's, it's, it's a lot of things that go into play. And, the average person will tell you, but come on, it's not that serious. It's just a website. No, because you also have to think about the psychological aspect. You know? I think those are all good questions. We can ask our, I mean, ask ourselves about what we're trying to do. I think that, that's really helpful. And Barry, why don't you let them know where they can find you on uh, Twitter, Instagram, if they have questions. So on it. Instagram, you can find me at underscore map art. That's M-A-P art, A-R-T, all one word. And on Twitter, you can find me at underscore Mario Pena, all one word. And it's under, uh, at underscore uh, map art, right? Yes, sir. Those are my initials and then the word art following it. On the Instagram or on um, Twitter. On Twitter, Twitter. on Twitter, it's my, my full name uh, spelled out, underscore Mario Pena. All right. Uh, is there an underscore on the Twitter or no? Uh, yes, underscore Mario Pena, yep. Okay, well, we'll put an underscore up there so everyone can uh, follow and uh, check out a lot of the great art that he puts up there on uh, on the social media front. Now, you were mentioning earlier um, in the broadcast about uh, places that you were drawing inspiration from, documentaries. Any any in particular that you would point other artists or just any of us to watch that you really got a lot out of as you were spending time just drawing from other places? Yeah, um, uh one of the docu one of my favorite documentaries is one of uh, based on one of my favorite artists uh, who Maddie knows very well, um, Basquiat, Jean Michel Basquiat. He uh, in the eighties uh, he was featured in his first major film called Downtown Eighty One, and it's basically a film of himself just you know almost like a camera following him around doing graffiti in the streets, painting in his studio. Um, so Downtown, it's called Downtown Eighty One. Uh, with Jean-Michel Basquiat. Um, another uh, documentary from, uh, you know, from the uh, photography side of me, which I also enjoy photography, is by one of my favorite photographers of all time, Gordon Parks. And Gordon Parks has a documentary called Half Past Autumn. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it probably on YouTube. You can get it on YouTube as well. Um, some of the uh, documentaries have been uploaded in, in full. Um, I actually watched a documentary that came out not too long ago on Miles Davis. I'm a big jazz fan, so Tom, yeah. when I, I get inspired by a lot of different things. Miles Davis is one of my favorite jazz trumpeters of all time. Um, and not only as a musician, but Miles Davis was also a painter. Uh, nice. You know, in the late 70s, that's when he really started evolving and coming out of his uh, shell and actually blossoming as a painter. Um, so, you know, I draw inspiration from all that stuff. 
um, old movies. Like one of my favorite movies is Platoon with Oliver Stone and all the like. People are like, wait a minute, how do you get inspired from a war movie? I'm like, you'd be surprised, man. You'd be surprised because I'm trying to go through the timeline in such a you know narrow, you know restriction of time that I have, and just trying to almost like Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump was the whole movie was like you were able to see the whole timeline from beginning to end in one movie. And that's what I'm trying to do is crunch in a little bit of everything, you know. Um, I'll listen to different, uh, uh, you know, music, music from Egypt, music from Lebanon, um, Hindu music, Ravi Shankar. You know, I'll go back to my KRS-One, you know, 1988, you know, you know, public enemy, you know, and just like and every time I get into the groove, I just like, you know what, every time I'm going to start rocking inside the lab, I just set myself up. From a music standpoint, spiritual standpoint, and the essence and the vibes have to be right. There's days to, I'm going to be very honest with you, and I'm be, and I'm sure that a lot of artists or visionaries, creatives can relate. Tom, there's days where I don't want to pick up a paintbrush. There's days where I don't even want to see a canvas because I need, I'm, you know, I, I I feel like I'm getting burnt out. I got to step back. So I step back. I'll do some, well, you know, what they call nowadays self care. Right. And I'll just rejuvenate, refuel mentally spiritually and then to get back at it and if not i'll start another piece i'll put that piece to rest for a few and then i'll start a new you know just to get a, you know start have a, a slate fresh start but um it's it, look man i always say that and i put this in a lot of my work i always put little quotes like trust the process the beauty is within the process you know at some point you know you're going to reach the end result but i find beauty in the process in the challenges and the new things that you discover, not only as an artist, but you discover about yourself as you're creating. You know? All about the journey, man. Yeah, I you love know, that. Everybody yeah. says it all the time, but it's, you know, it's not the destination, it's the journey, right? Yeah. It's how you got there. And, I, and like I said, I love it. And then you, you get to see that progression in art and everything else. And just what you're saying about music, and we laughed, was it two or three weeks ago? You know, I listened, my, my, iPhone will give people a headache for the different styles of music <laughs> that I listen to. And sometimes I have a, uh, a tendency maybe to go from like Megadeth into Public Enemy, into, into jazz, into, uh, into techno. You know, I know it's not really much of a surprise to those that know me, you know, scattered mind, uh, scattered music. But what was it, two weeks ago, we were, we were knocking out the jazz. And uh, for jazz people out there, here's what, here, a real gem that, that goes for is, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Victor Wooten. And we were, we were knocking out some... Uh, some Victor Root, and you want to talk about one of the most talented jazz bassists of, of, of all time. So vibing out to that stuff, and it and it's just great. It's like the epitome of lounge music. So when you hear jazz and everything, and you just see everybody's face, just like with art and everything else, a cigar, the second you put the jazz on, the whole premise of the room, everything just changes. More chill, laid back, uh, more thoughtful, uh, more introspective. You know, it's wild. And, and it just goes to show you how all different pieces of art can influence how your day is going and how you're yeah. feeling. And I, mean, I love that, man. Yeah, that is it is so important. A uh, variety of influences uh, going new places and also just knowing, um, as you were saying, Mario, just uh, we might feel uh, as artists uh, uh, or whatever we're creating the need and the, the pressure to keep creating. But knowing when to step back and. I think that's important because sometimes that sometimes there may be a, a feeling of guilt or a feeling of pressure that's that's there. So I think what you're saying is very important. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And definitely. There's definitely days where it, it's not art, but well, I guess there is an art to, to to tasting. But there's definitely days I don't pour a glass of whiskey. But that's a whole different. You're rebooting, just you know. Yeah, you have you have. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Very it's a whole different thing. <laughs> Like Maddie said, it's 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 not easy to hit the reset button, but yeah, you have to, you have to get there. You have to get there. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um, and there's, I, I'll go through my hiatus, uh, Tom. You know, I'll say to myself, you know what? I've been in the studio too long. I think yeah. it's time to go see some other work. I was always when I was doing my undergrad studies in art school, um, my professors would always tell me all the time, as an artist, it's very important to look at other artists' work. It's very important, not because you're trying to steal ideas or copy. It's just you got to keep it fresh up here. You got to keep it fresh because you'll find yourself in a, in a place where like, wait a minute, I just knocked out 10 canvases and all 10 canvases look the same. So that's when and you know, I, another thing that I was taught too was 
they always told me, and I'll never forget, his name was Drew Brown, very successful artist, Andrew Brown. He always told me, when you become comfortable as an artist, you're in trouble. You know? And I rode with that. Uh, I, you know, I, he told me that 25 years ago, Tom. And to this day, I still hear his voice, him telling me that. Wow. Never get comfortable as an artist because that means you're in trouble. You know, you got to keep it fresh. And is it, is it uh, challenging to keep it fresh? Yes, because... Things are moving so rapidly, Tom. Like, I'll create something today. But like, yo, I just, I just invented something. I just discovered something, and then all you got to do is log on to social media, and somebody's like twenty steps ahead of you. And you know, it's not about where you know, it's not a, it's not a race. But you say to yourself, like, wait a minute. Like, if you want to keep up with the times, you got to step it up a notch. So it's, it puts this, this like, little irritating pressure on you that it, you shouldn't let it affect you. But look, my man. You're not the only one here. It's like anything else. It's it's art is a competitive thing, obviously. Um, it's it's an internal thing, but when you're trying to you know be out there and play with the big dogs of the art game, you you got to put in your work, man. You got to put in work because for every day that you're saying, yeah, you know what, I'll take three days off, you got to think about it. Yeah, you're taking a three day three day hiatus, but there's millions of artists out there that are working all night, all day. And now you're three three days behind. So you'd be like, you're, you know, so it, the beauty for me, I look at it as a beauty, uh, a beauty thing, uh, Tom, as a positive thing. It keeps me on my toes. The fact that I know that there's other artists creating and, you know, trying to make it to the top like everyone else is. Yeah. The hustle. Man. The hustle is serious. The grind is real. As you were, as you were, uh, growing up, coming up as a, as a younger artist, was there a particular show or, that you saw in person the first time you saw someone's work that you really admired that really uh, impacted you? Oh, man. Uh, the first time I saw um, that impacted me was an artist uh, by the name of Willie Cole. Willie Cole is a, Jer a Jersey native, uh, sculpture uh, artist, sculptural artist. He has uh, his collections in uh, prestigious galleries. Uh, the Newark Museum has uh, his work in the uh, permanent collection. Beautiful sculptures made out of shoes, hundreds of shoes. Um, beautiful sculptures made out of water bottles. I mean, all found objects, Tom. Um, he used ironing boards. Um, he did a series of iron scorches, which, and that's what, I, that's when it clicked to me. When I, when the first time I saw the series of Willie Cole's work of iron scorches, where he scorched hot irons onto this uh, beautiful watercolor paper. And when you think about it, when you look at the bottom of uh, irons, they all have different designs and different holes drilled. So he compared those designs and patterns on the back, on the bottom of the uh, irons, to different tribes in Africa. Wow! So when you saw them all together, you're like, wait a minute, it makes sense. Like to me, that was genius. I'm a 17 year old kid, and I'm looking at this. I'm like, this guy's a genius. You know, he took the ironing board and heated it up and made a scorching, a scorching of this of a life size ironing board. And when you looked at it, it looked like a top view of the transatlantic slave trade because it looked like the vessel. And I'm like, this is genius, man. Like this, this guy's on another level and looking at things like that, not only inspired me, but said to myself, now you see how deep you got to get with it. You got to get deep. It's you got, you got, you got to dig deep. You have to dig deep. Yep. The only thing I've done with irons is, uh, is burn shirts. That's about it. That was, that, that was my, my artistic thing is destroying shirts. Like, yeah, uh, yeah there's okay. another one. Really. But, um, yeah. Um, I think Willie Cole, uh, Tom, Willie Cole, I'll never forget. Man. It was at the first time I went to the New York museum. And I saw that, I'm like, who's this guy, man? And then I found out he was a Jersey native. He's also a professor um, at a lot of prestigious uh, institutes, uh, NYU, SVA. These are, you know, prestigious institutes in, in, uh, in the States here for art that, like, wow. Um, but there was a couple, there was another artist by the name of uh, Glenn Lagan, African-American artist too, who did a lot of uh, stencils, used a lot of found objects. Um, just to get his point across, you know, sculptural artists, um, graffiti, forget it, man. Every Sunday we used to go to the South Bronx. So as I was going to the South Bronx as a little kid, my mom's driving this 1979 Chevy Malibu. I'll never forget rusted four door white. And I'm just looking out the window. I'm looking at all these billboards and I'm like, who the hell are these guys? And I can remember back in the eighties and I didn't come to find out till maybe when I was like 18, 19, but I, I remember me seeing the Tatch crew. And I would say to myself as a little kid, who the hell are these people? And then as I got more knowledge 
and gain more knowledge on hip hop and graffiti culture, I said, wow, as a kid, as a 10 year old, I'm looking at work that these guys put up 30, almost 40 years ago. And now I come to go like, wow, like, you know, to be able to see that was legendary, the break dancing, you know, it's just the culture, the, the pissy mattresses and watching the kids flip on them in the street. Like all that, all that stuff inspired me, Tom, all that stuff. You know, even my own neighborhood, I grew up in a small town in New Jersey called Passaic. Uh, it's, it's three and a half square miles uh, long. It's, it's, it's literally small. Right. And, you know, even just to see, you know, me and myself growing up in such a diverse uh, community uh, with so many different uh, walks of life, you know, so many different ethnicities. Um, I can't complain. And, and all that plays a role in my work. Me having this, uh, you know, doing this uh, blog live with you right now, and Maddie, this, this experience will also, you know, turn into some type of inspiration to a future piece. Because again, I absorb, I study, I write mentally, and then I say, okay, how can I take this experience on the bourbon blog and now trans, you know, transcend it or transmit it into a, a visual thing, you know? So that's what I try to do all the time, Tom. I just try to absorb, you know, as much positive as I can. Um, and I say, okay, what can I do with this? So I'm on, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a bourbon blog with Tom wearing the fashionable bow tie, and I'm over here with Matty <laughs> Rock, a.k.a. Rock the Galaxy Rock. That's the right. Galaxy. And I'm saying to myself, like, okay, how could I take these two, you know, things? That, that's pretty tough. You take, you, take, you take the classy guy with the bow tie, and then you have to build out of a dumpster. And I'm like, so okay. Like, so I'm like, it's time to go to the lab this. now, man. It's time to go to the lab. But you know what, Tom? That's My thing is... Uh, you know, I don't know if I'm if I'm putting the right label on myself as an artist. My job is to make people feel better, um, yeah. entertain people because a piece can be very entertaining to someone. You know, even if the piece is hanging on the wall, every day that you walk into whatever room that piece is hanging on, you'll take a look at it. It's entertaining you. It's giving you a feeling that just moments ago before you saw that or stared at it, you weren't feeling that. Now you look at it, you like, you know what? It's not a bad day after. I just looked at Mario's piece. I feel better now. And, and we had that conversation, right? So yeah. and being the artist is even cooler, right? To know that your inspiration, every artist at the end of the day, I mean, I have no art skills, so I have to, uh, I have to defer to Mario on this one. But anytime you could give a piece of yourself and, and who you are and what you do to somebody else and know that they're enjoying it every single day, that's a pretty powerful feeling, whether it's art or music or or find spirits or cigars. And I always think that's really cool because those are things that a lot of people don't really sit back and think about. You know, I like to get really granular with that kind of stuff. It's like, what am I smoking today? How happy is it? I'm really enjoying the cigar. So, you know, somewhere there's a there's a bunch of rollers and blenders and everything. You go, you know what? This dude really enjoys what I did with my two bare hands, what I did, what I put together. And obviously, Tom, in your field, and especially as an educator on it, you're you get to watch, drink all these different concoctions that, that people will come to listen to you, see what your opinion is and your thoughts. And they're listening to you describe what they put out into market uh, passionately. And I think that's, you know, that's really, really cool stuff. And obviously, obviously, that's that's the core of art, right? When you put something up, somebody's enjoying the expression that you give to them. And I think that's really cool. It's It's a pretty cool gift. I mean, it, you, know, you know, Tom, yeah. just to piggyback off of what Maddie is saying, um, you know, so people, are, some people are probably saying, okay, an artist being featured on the bourbon blog, what does art and bourbon have to do with each other? Well, yes. I, look at, I look at it this way. The fact that you're, 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 you're an educator on, on bourbons and whiskeys and whatever other drinks you may be educated on, the tasting is an art in itself. Mm. You know? Tasting, it's an art in itself. Tasting. Um, you look at the designs in the bottle. I'm intrigued by how classy, how beautiful the labels on these bottles are. The same thing yeah. with cigar bands. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm infatuated and just knock off my shoes on, on, on the, uh, uh, the craftsmanship that go in into these cigar bands. How intricate they are, you know? The labels on bottles. Like, wow, that graphic designer was really, you know, looking in deep. You know, that painter. But... The way the shape of the bottle, the way that that glass was carved, that's all art. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, I agree, and I I think these are all 
I'm glad you said this because, you know, whiskey, there's an art to making it, to tasting it. Same with cigars uh, and art itself. These are all elements that bring um, a variety of people together on, over, over one thing, that being the whiskey, the cigar, the art, and the ability to experience all of them at one time. Um, you know, it's, it's multifaceted. It, it has a lot of layers to it. Um, I mean, how many times, Tom, you, you being such a big bourbon guy, how many times have you said something? I mean, obviously, you're not just going to pick up a bottle and just buy the bottle and say, I'm going to buy the bottle. But how many times have you found yourself saying, man, this bottle is sexy. This yes. is a sexy bottle, you know? And it, it's, it, and it makes a difference. Uh, packaging, bottles. I'll show you, I'll show you one that I, you mentioned art on, you know, the, the art of a bottle. Uh, one of the brands that we really appreciate a lot is called Savage and Cook, and their whiskeys actually have photographs on the front of their bottles. Yeah, so this is actually called the Burning Chair. It's actually a photograph of a burning chair. Uh, this brand is based in Napa, California, and it was created by the uh, winemaker uh, Dave Finney, who's big into art. Um, and even inside the distillery, there's a lot of interesting art. But all of their bottles actually have um, a photograph of, or, or a variety of photographs. So I think, you know, the way this is communicated to me is um, really interesting. I happen to have that close by. Yeah. I was just, yeah. Telling, Maddie Rock, uh, I was just telling Maddie before we came on, uh, we were talking about 19 crimes. I, I love the packaging. It's yes. so simple. You, you got like yeah. all these monster looks uh, photographs on the label. And I'm like, dude, that's genius. It's genius. It's a it simple is. idea. But it's it's it gets the point across. It's powerful. Nineteen. Right. You're you're asking yourself, okay, should I be drinking a wine that's named the Nineteen Crimes? Am I going to commit a crime after I drink this? Maybe. <laughs> no, I think that happens after you drink Bad Dog Twenty Twenty. But oh what, my god! What, what, what do I know? <laughs> I think everybody's had their run with Mad Dog Twenty Twenty at least once. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like at least oh, yeah. One, yeah. But um, yeah, man. I, I, look, I and I know um, Tom that, and I hear it all the time. You know. Oh, I'm not really into art and all that. And I tell people, I said, I respect the fact that you may not be into art, but there's no way of escaping it. Everything around you is art. Everything. Right. Everything that right. you purchase, everything that you wear, everything that you drive has been, before it became a physical object, it was laid out on with pencil and paper first. The idea. So, right. you know, for you not to, for you to uh, say, well, I'm not a big advocate of art. Yeah, it's all right. Dude, you're surrounded by our 360, 365, 24 7, no matter what. Yes. Even That's the so toothbrush awesome. that you choose to brush your teeth with is art because it's a sculpture. It's sculptural. That's right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're absolutely right. Uh, I was yeah. going to bring up uh, another one of your pieces uh, just because it's fun to hear the stories uh, behind these. All right. This one's interesting with the arm and hammer. I see Hustler. What? What? Tell me about this piece. All right. So. <laughs> that that piece is interesting right there. <laughs> so, again, childhood memories, right? Growing up in a Latino household, you know, parents are like, I work too hard. We can't afford for uh, food. It's spoiled. So, you know, I remember as a young kid, my mom having uh, baking soda boxes inside the refrigerator. Because she was like, we can't, you know, my mom, you know, the single parent home, my mom, you know, was making ends meet, putting food on the table. And, um, I just remember her saying, we can't afford to throw away food or this food can't spoil. I work too hard for the food. And that was just a memory that just stuck with me. Like every time I opened the box, the fridge, there was a baking soda box in there, right? <laughs> um, and then um, Hustler. So again, here's my childhood memories. Growing up inner city, growing up, uh, growing, uh, you know, growing up around um, the drug era, one of the toughest times and most interesting times for me growing up in America I would have to say between 86 and 88 during the crack era. Yep. Um, and I saw, I remember the first time driving to New York with my mom, actually on a Sunday, we were on our way to the Bronx. I remember the first time I saw Keith Haring's mural um, in Harlem, Crack is Whack. So, um, you know, and I remember going to school, seeing crack balls on the floor and seeing all these drug dealers, you know, in the streets, hustlers. Right. So you'll see in Spanish with the black text, it says La Funda Papo. And what that means is like, yo, the bag player, like the, the bag, like Poppy, yo, Poppy the bag. And I'm talking, the bag I'm talking about is either a bag of money or a bag of the substance, right? So then Hustler, Arm and Hammer. And as you can see, it's kind of uh, cluttered in the middle. That's a representation, Tom, of all the things 
that I was experiencing and seeing as an eight and nine year old. Here's an eight and nine year old seeing things in the streets that an eight and nine year old shouldn't be seeing. Right. You know. Um, and, and the word hustler, that word hustler, and because every corner growing up in a city, you had your hustlers. Hey, by any means, whichever way you make your ends meet, that's on you. I respect your game. I respect your hustle. But and the 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 uh, the uh, arm and hammer that is forever stained in my brain. I'll never forget every time a brand new box. And my mom never failed with arm and hammer. Never in the fridge. And my mom was from the Bronx, so you know, same. Yeah, we had some of that. Yeah, they. I was. I I, I looked at that piece, and I was, you know trying to imagine what the story behind that was. It's amazing to, you know, to hear the, uh, the story of, of what you've, um, of what you put together there. Uh, again, it's uh, Mario uh, A. Pena and uh, Bourbon Blog Live here. Um, any questions for Mario, definitely ask them down below. Make sure you bookmark Mario A. Pena uh, as you check out his art later on. And some shows, well, this will be in August. Uh, people will see this show that you were mentioning. Yes, yeah, so uh, this will solo show. This will be my first solo show in uh, quite some time. Yeah, uh, which I'm very honored. I'm very uh, happy and looking forward to because I know that I'm going to put the best of me out on canvas, and uh, I hope to make an impact that I myself will be impacted by. Um, this will be in uh, August of 2020, uh, 2021. I'm sorry, not 2020, 2021. Wait, don't say that. Uh, no, yeah, no. Don't say that. Ah! <laughs> uh, 2021 uh, at the Rexer Gallery in Hobo, New Jersey. As I get closer to the uh, dates, I will be putting up little sneak peeks of the work that will be at the show, just to start getting the hype built up and uh, getting people uh, excited. Um, and uh, obviously, when the show does come around and I get the definite dates, then you'll see a full blast go out. Exciting. Very nice. We'll a couple of things to remind everybody yeah. of is uh, guys and gals out there, remember, reach out if you're looking to have something particularly commissioned, definitely reach out to Mario on that. Um, reach out to him directly and, and y'all can work out something on there. Uh, Tom, if there's anybody new on the show today, so everybody who does know you know that you're on the road most of the year going out doing uh, tastings and shows and pairings. Um, in the COVID days that we're living through, Tom, obviously now we're doing things digitally, much like we are today here, but you can still have a, the opportunity, folks, put something together with Tom to do an online tasting and pairing. I will uh, defer to you to talk about that, Tom. Thank you all so much. And uh, and yes, the uh, place to bookmark, check out later, is bourbonblog.com forward slash tastings. Everything from weekly tastings that are ticketed to a uh, chance to uh, have me come in virtually to walk you and your business or your friends and family through some tastings. Uh, we've been loving do the, doing this. Uh, to actually put whiskey samples and even full-size bottles in many cases in your hands. So uh, uh, we guide, actually just did one earlier today, and we had a lot of fun guiding people through uh, a tasting. So usually I am going wonderful places and hosting whiskey tastings from small towns to the big towns to uh, festivals. Uh, as as Mar Mar Maria was mentioning, uh, like uh, Miami, I'm at the South Beach Wine and Food Festival every year, uh, hosting some whiskey tastings and um, – Hopefully, uh, Mario will be seeing you in Miami or New Jersey at some point yeah. when uh, things are better. Any other uh, areas uh, that you that you go to a lot with your art that you're inspired by, uh, cultures, regions, uh, in addition to Miami that that you kind of feel like is part of your artistic home? Um, New York City, man. New York City, Tom. Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn. Oh, um, yeah. Soho. Every time I go to Soho, Prince Street and Crosby. I, you know, I almost feel like I'm living in the in the uh, 70s Andy Warhol era, the Keith Harrings, the Kenny Sharps. And yeah. every time, there's not one time that I don't go into uh, Soho and I don't think about those, you know, those artists and the galleries that were there in the 80s that are no longer there. And to know that such uh, powerful, iconic uh, American artists once in their life, you know, stepped foot here, that means yeah. a lot, you know. And the yeah. fact that I'm able to see um, still, the fact that we're still able to see original Basquiat's, original Warhols, yeah. you know, you kind of sort of put yourself in those shoes like, man, what was, the, what, what were they thinking? You know, what was their mood? What was their purpose? You know, um, and you, you know, you, you look around, a lot of things have changed in, in a span of 30, four, almost 30, 40, 30, 40 years. Right. And, you know, you, but you still, for me, I still say to myself, wow, the Tony Shafrasi gallery used to be right here, but now there's like some condo, things have been gentrified, but I still look beyond the, the new gentrification of like the Tony Shafrazi gallery was there. 
Kenny Sharp had a, a tag right here. You know, I still look like, and, and I just try to take myself back in time. Um, Brooklyn, definitely um, the Carolinas, South Carolina. Mm. I love Charleston, uh, South Carolina. Um, Georgia, Atlanta um, is another uh, place for me where there's so many artists out there that I respect. There's an artist that I've been following for quite a while. Um, his name is Cedric Smith. Um, he started off as a photographer and he's a painter now. Um, and what he does is he recreates old um, food, soda, gasoline advertisements with the uh, uh, presence of African-American uh, faces. Um, you know, five cents, peaches, watermelon. Uh, and I just love, it's fun, you know, because he has this archive. He'll go into like old antique shops or secondhand thrift stores and he finds all these old photographs, uh, Caucasian, African-American, different races, wow. and has no idea who the hell they are. And he incorporates them into the paintings and the end result is just, wow, you know. Uh, cool. Frank Morrison, another phenomenal illustrator who lived in Jersey for a while. Um, but New York, the Carolinas, um, Boston, interesting. You know what? Boston, Maine, you know, I've been uh, up and down the whole East Coast. Um, one place that I have to say that I keep dear to my heart is um, Key West, Florida. I remember the first time I went to Key West, I was 14 years old. And I remember seeing the sign like 90 miles away from Cuba. And I'm like, you know what? One day I'll be there. And Cuba was on my bucket list for many years, man. And in 2019, I was granted the opportunity to travel to Cuba. Uh, I was supposed to go again um, this year, but due to COVID, it got shut down. But, um, and I say this to Matty Rock, I said it on the TLE podcast as well. I know that when I go back to Cuba, once all this stuff clears up, my best work, not as a painter, but as a photographer is going to come out. Because I left, you know, me and Cuba have unfinished business. And there's still memories of Cuba that I say, you know what, when I get back here, I'm, I'm going all out. That's going to be probably my most powerful body of work as a photographer. And Cube is the place for me. Very nice. In fact, you, you mentioned the TLE podcast. They had they had just asked the question to uh, mention uh, clocks. Uh, tell us about your clocks. Oh, okay. So, you know, again, you know, I'm changing things up and, and saying, okay, how can I market my work with, with something's fun? You know, that's affordable. The, the bottom line, Tom, is that not everyone can afford an original work of art, right? Right. Um, due to their finances, due to their situations, and no one's going to go ahead and buy, purchase an original work of art before putting food on the table or, you know, paying their rent. And I respect that. So I said, how can I give back to the people that can't afford a, a original work of art and make it fun and yet usable, right? So I came out with a series of pens, stickers, and then I said, you know what, now i got to start thinking outside the box. I said, you know what? What would my work look like in clocks? Everybody needs a clock. Even though we live in such a digital age, even if you don't look at the clock, right. you still have it hanging on the wall, right? <laughs> whether you got a battery or whether it's wound up or not, you still got it. People use it for decor. So I said, you know what? I'm going to come out with clocks. And uh, I, I had just finished redesigning um, the Wu-Tang logo, one of my favorite uh, hip-hop groups of all time, with my work embedded in it. Um, and I got, I, I came with stickers. I came out with many originals who sold right away and it was a hit. And I said, you know what? I'm going to continue to ride this little Wu-Tang wave uh, as far as I can. I said, I'm going to come out with clocks. It's for the children. For the children. It's I for the to, children. I had to throw that in. Who for the children. I to throw that in. And right, right now I see Jesse Flores going, mm -hmm. yep. You know, and, and, um, and Tom and I, and, and I, uh, the, the first painting that you brought up that, uh, is hanging here, Sans, with the character, that right. character been a hit as well and i said you know what i gotta keep pushing riding this way with these two things i said who doesn't like wu-tang for you not to like wu-tang you gotta be like from some other planet man right you know and then the character that we've seen in the first piece that you presented earlier um it's been a hit too and it's kind of sort of like become my identity people ask me all the time is that you and i'm like yeah it's uh it's a, it's an abstract of me what is the definition of abstract a portion of something not the whole right so I came out with clocks and I started, I remember when I first posted out, people were like, yo, this is hot. I want a clock, man. So I had, you know, I, I sold a couple of clocks, man. It, it was good. Clocks, the, the orders keep coming in. Um, and again, people can still have that feeling like, okay, this is not an original work of art from Mario, but shit, I got something from him. And it's signed. What I did was I signed them all in the back, Tom. So they got, they got hand signed clocks. And people were like, just the signature, like, dude, I'm good. I'm good, man. Thanks. You know, 
<laughs> and are these or will these be out again at some point or worth? Yeah, these- they're actually they're actually on the website right now. The big cartoon. They're on the website right now. Yes. Right I got T-shirts up there. I got stickers. I got pins. And like I said, I got a, a couple of goodies that I just don't want to talk about just yet, um, just to keep the hype going. Um, but um, keep the suspense, not the hype. Keep the suspense. But I got some goodies coming out, Tom. And just to be a dick, I've seen it. It's awesome. You'll want it. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I always, you know, I always run ideas by Maddie. Um, Maddie always gives me a good, uh, um, good takes on, hey, you should look into this. This is what's uh, hot right now. Um, tap into this. Just experiment with it, you know. Like they say, uh, Tom, the greatest risk in life is not taking one, you know. Right. So I got some fun stuff coming. I'm taking my time with it. I'm definitely taking my time. Um, I'm not going to allow anyone to rush me with it because, again, these are these mean a lot to me. The new series of works that I'm coming out, they're very personal to me. And I want it to be just as personal to whomever ends up, you know, owning one of those pieces. And the place to go, Mario, Mario A. Pena, Mario A. Pena, yes. right uh, check that uh, site out and, and all the art, follow him on the social media there, his Instagrams and Twitters, and so many great people joining us tonight. I know a lot of fans of uh, Mario and fans that join us every week and uh, do you. keep on coming back. Yes, keep coming back every week to uh, bourbonblog.com lives, Cigar Saturday. Uh, make sure you bookmark this. Follow this uh, wherever you're watching, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Make sure you follow this channel. And, uh, Maddie, who do we have coming up? I know we have some interesting guests in the next uh, few weeks. So for the next two weeks we have coming up, next week, all, all my cigar peeps out there, we have the master, Willie Herrera. Yes. So everybody who's uh, who loves our boy Willie, come check us out next week. We'll be talking about all of his blends and and what he's done throughout his career, starting at Teton and everything else uh, through the progression through Drew Estate. So that'll be a great show. And the week after that, we have Federico, who most people know is Furio from The Sopranos, will be on the week after that. Nice. And uh, shuffling the schedule around as we get a little bit closer, I will, uh, I'll be naming some of our new guests. Will uh, will Federico there, uh, Furio, be in uh, Sanchez with you, or will he be in another camera? Uh, hard to say. If he if, if he's say. around he'll be here, if not, he'll be uh, he'll be he'll be from his home. But he's he's here in Jersey, so he's not far away. Here in Jersey, yeah. Well, I can't wait for the day, which hopefully won't be too long, where we will all be uh, on camera there together at Sanja's, uh bringing you all this broadcast. But it's it's great to see both of you all uh, together tonight, and to be joining you all uh, virtually, and to have all these great people joining us. Uh, Mario, uh, you're, you're, you're very talented. Your, your energy and your passion are just so evident as I'm talking to you, and it just uh, means a lot to connect with you. And, thank, and, and thanks to uh, Sanj there for that piece. Uh, that'll be awesome to have and hang up here. So thank okay. you. Yes. Really. Thank you, Tom. Tom, it's, uh, I, like I said, I, you know, I, I said to myself, I was like, wait a minute. I'm, the, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a guest artist on a bourbon blog. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> this is like, uh, again, something I didn't think about, you know, liquor, Art. Yeah, we'll make it work some way. We'll make it work. Um, I'm, I'm very humbled. I'm honored. And, you know, just taking baby steps. Like they say, slow and steady wins the race. That's right. Well, and, and we uh, can't wait to have some whiskey with you at some point in person yeah. when we're back there in Jersey. It will be wonderful uh, to be there with you. Liquor can often inspire artists, too, from what I've seen. Yes. Yeah. Which is a pleasure. Important. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And we'll have this uh, interview up permanently wherever you're watching it. Or uh, if you want to listen to it, make sure you subscribe to our podcast, which is that link right there, Anchor FM, Bourbon Blog. Great to see you, Maddie and Mario and Son. And all of our friends. Cheers, everybody. All right. Take care, everybody. Be good. Keep it cool. Peace. Thank you, guys.